Good morning, Oklahoma, and welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week, we talk about freeze branding of beef cattle. And as we've talked about in past segments over time, if we want to have good production records in a herd of cows, it's very important that we've got some sort of permanent identification on those cows. Now we can use ear tags and, and a variety of things that may get lost, but the age old identification system of branding is proven throughout the industry. And particularly at this point in time, a lot of cattle producers prefer freeze branding over fire branding. We're gonna do less damage to the hide. It's a fairly simple process once you get comfortable with what you actually need to do. And Grant Hubbard, our Purebred Beef Cattle Center headquarters manager is joining us today. I appreciate Grant taking time off from preparing for the Cowboy Classic sale in April. Uh, one of the things we point out when it comes to freeze branding is we want to do it at times of the year when we've actually got hair growing on these cattle. The process by which freeze branding works is we actually freeze and kill off the pigment and so that the hair grows back white after we've completed the freeze branding procedure by a few weeks after we've done it. So it works really well on black cattle, really well on red cattle, not so good on white cattle just because of that. But the process we use here at Purebred Beef Cattle Center has proven to be pretty effective. Customers have been very complimentary of it. And we'll walk you through some of the things that we do here. And behind us, you can see some of the equipment that we've got set up. So Grant, as we get started, I know here in a minute, we're actually gonna freeze brand one, but how long ago today did you start preparation to get the irons activated and stuff like that? We let the irons sit in an alcohol or methanol solution with dry ice in it for about an hour and a half. When the frost starts building up on the irons, that means they're cold enough and ready to go. Just walk me through the procedure. From the, We're gonna do some heifers today some of our replacement heifers here at the school. From the time we've caught that heifer and have her secured in the chute, and we know that a chute's very important for the safety of everybody and animal involved in this, what's gonna happen at that point to complete the procedure? Well, when we go to freeze brand these yearling heifers, we'll get them caught in the chute, squeeze them down. We'll shear off a section of their hide with a surgical blade to make sure that's nice and tight to the hide when the brand is applied. We'll let that, we'll shear it off, soak it, then spray it down with alcohol, and let the brand sit on there for a minute to a minute and 15 seconds, and do that repeatedly for their all their tattoo digits. And Grant, what about, I know we're gonna use a rice root or a curry comb here to clean up that area. Are we doing that before we peel that hair off or after? Um, we will do that after to make sure all that debris is out of there after we've sheared off the hair. The irons will stay on the hide for about a minute, minute and 15 seconds, and make sure right there about the 45 second mark, we take them irons and really roll in the edges of there so it's nice, crisp, and it comes out number full in form. And the irons we use here at the school, they're about three to three and a half inch irons? Yes, sir. And we like the size of those because as we do it on approximately yearlings, they continue to get a little bigger with age. They don't get obnoxiously big, and yet they're big enough that if we're out checking heat in the pasture and we got that hip, hip exposed to us, we're gonna see that and know what animal we're actually looking at. What else to tell us about it, Grant? We got the iron, what we need, the, the methanol and the dry ice. We're, we're getting methanol from a gas station nearby. Yep. We're getting our dry ice from grocery stores. Yes, sir. Producers may need to investigate, do some homework on where you can secure those things. We're mixing it to activate it with the irons in it. We know we need a spray bottle of alcohol, the clippers, a rice root or a, a curry comb, something like that to get that hide cleaned up and some, some means of timing. Yes, we, uh, we use a stopwatch here and or set an alarm on your phone for a minute so then you don't have to have, have it in your hand and you use both hands to freeze brand. And I guess if we're doing this out at the pa in the middle of a pasture, we got to have a source of electricity for our clippers. So possibly a generator if we don't have an electrical outlet in the barn. Yep. And two insulated coolers also to keep that dry ice from melting off at a quicker rate and keep the irons cold. So if we're going to be freeze branding all day long about how much methanol and how much dry ice do we need to start the day with? Uh, 
two to three gallons of methanol and a gallon of alcohol for your sprayer and then probably six or seven pounds of dry ice should get you through the day or approximately 50 head. So Grant, any final thoughts on freeze branding? I think the main thing is just take your time, no rush, because then freeze brands last a lifetime, so you want to make sure they're done right. And I appreciate Dr. Johnson having me on Cow-Calf Corner this morning. And you got a full day of it planned. You're planning to do about 50 head of replacement heifers today, right? Yes, sir. I guess one final thing, and I don't know if we talked about it yet, if it was rainy, if it was really humid, if it was really windy and we were dealing with a lot of bad weather, we'd probably cancel this and schedule it for another day, right? Yes, sir, and we're lucky. It's beautiful sunshine here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, so we're gonna run through our yearlings this morning and this afternoon and get them all freeze branded. Thank you, Grant. Thank and you thank you all for joining us on Cow-Calf Corner. Ah.